Be seated. <clears throat> One of the things with which I deal on a continual basis is how is it that I live a life of faith? How do I live a faithful life? Does that ever concern you? Uh, with the laughter, I, I hear yes. Uh, it's, it's a major question for me. Uh, there are all kinds of ways to live life, and there are times that I must tell you that I kind of want to say, yeah, to them all, and I just, just want to go do what I want to do. But the idea of how do I live a faithful life is a very important question. Now, if I revert back to my childhood and what I was told then, and if I read a good part of what people say nowadays about what it means to live a faithful life, then I must assume that I have to read my Bible continually. I must continually be reflecting on the Scriptures, and I must be deciding how I'm going to do every little thing that I encounter there. I have to tell you, I don't do that. And I don't do that for a couple of reasons. Now, that's not to say that I don't read the scriptures. I do. It's not to say I don't study them. I do. But this thing of continually reading them, one, I find to be rather distracting, sometimes downright boring. And at other times, I know that the reality is that what I read is not always what is there. Take, for example, two of our scriptures that we read this morning. This beautiful, beautiful text from Isaiah. The talking about the expansiveness of God in wonderful, beautiful terms. I love that scripture. But there is an assumption that is inherent in that scripture that you may not catch on to. And it's this. The earth is here, and there's this inverted bowl, like a glass, clear glass bowl, that is above the earth, and it comes down to the earth about where the rainbow ends. That last part I added. <laughs> and the stars rest against this bowl. And God is up there somewhere. I don't believe it. I do not believe that assumption. Third service, haven't been struck yet, so I think I'm okay. I don't believe that. I believe in the words that are there, and I believe in those images, but I don't believe that assumption. I believe in an expansive God that is imminent everywhere. And then in the today's gospel, Jesus has gone into Simon's home. And they tell him that Simon's mother-in-law is sick. She has a fever. So, unlike us, when we don't want to pass the peace because we're afraid we get sick, Jesus walks up to her. He reaches out and he takes her hand, and the, and the verse says he lifts her up. And he heals her. Now, what happens next? In your reading, in your translation, it's a very generous translation that says then that she serves them. In earlier translations, in other translations, it says she made them lunch, basically. In the Old Testament lesson, we had a story where there were assumptions that I cannot adopt. In this one, for centuries, this scripture along with others 
has been used to say that women's roles are is, is the women's role is that of servants, and therefore women cannot lead in congregations, and they should not lead at home. They are subservient to men. I'm going to make a statement that will surprise you. I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe that. And well, on the one hand, the assumptions we cannot adopt. On the other hand, we have historically taken Scripture and used it to support our own agenda rather than to try to read out of it what is there. So I say to us, if we are just sitting down and reading our Scripture, which I like, I think is a good thing, it's a dangerous thing to do. But now as I say that, I'm not saying that there is not value in it. And I'm not saying that there's nothing for us to get out of these Scriptures, especially the Gospel reading for today. In fact, I would say there are two things to get out of this reading of the gospel today that help us to live a life as faithful Christians. The first comes when Jesus reaches down and he takes her hand and he lifts her up and she's healed. I firmly believe that part of living a faithful life as Christians involves healing in our lives. Now, you and I, as we gather here at Iona Hope, we know that healing is a central aspect of our worship together. We do anointings and, and, and we offer prayers of healing for folks uh, in every service that we do here. But I want to suggest to us that the ultimately the healing that we are here to offer is larger than that. And that the ultimate aspect of healing is not curing, but reconciliation. And for us as Christians, it's reconciliation with God in Christ. And that this is part of what you and I offer as people of faith who walk the Christian route, who walk the way of Jesus. If Jesus reached out and took her hand and raised her up, if we follow him, it is our role too. And that you and I should be involved in it. So let me ask you a question. Do you think there is a place for reconciliation in our world? What do you think? Do you think our world needs it? Amen. Do you think that we have something to offer for it? Yes. Then the only question you and I have to ask ourselves is how are we going to do it? How are we going to offer reconciliation and healing in a world that so desperately needs it? I'm going to go out on a limb here and, and make one suggestion. I think we have a need to make up to those people for whom we have used Scripture to beat them down. People like women. I take great joy when she embarrasses herself. <laughs> what did she say? I said, any time now. Any time now. <laughs> but I also think other people, people of other faiths, who we've beaten down with Scripture, gays and lesbians, who we've meet, beaten down with Scripture. It's time for us as people of faith to bring reconciliation and healing to the world. 
question is, how are we going to do it? Now, the second thing I think that we get, or at least I get from this scripture, this gospel is this. I think that Simon's mother-in-law's example is not an example for women. I think it's an example for each and every one of us who has been healed by the presence of Christ in our lives. I think in this scripture, you and I are invited into a life in Christ in which you and I become servants. And that part of what happens when we are healed and reconciled is we learn to serve God, to serve God in Christ and His church, and learn to serve each other. That, I think, is, is, it makes for a very rich experience of this life of faith. Someone is going to tell somebody that I don't believe in reading the Scriptures, that I invited people today to not read the Bible. And if you want to go say that, that's okay. It's not true, mind you, but that's okay if that's what you want to do. And I'm not advocating that at all. I'm not advocating not reading the Scriptures. What I'm saying to us is that our lives of faith involve that, but they involve so much more. And that part of that has to do with being part of healing and reconciliation with the world and responding as servants to our own healing and reconciliation with God in Christ. So how do I wrap this thing up? This is how I do it. I pray to God for strength to be able to live out God's healing and reconciliating, reconciling word in the world. To live that out in my life. And I ask for humility to be able to serve God to serve Christ in God and to serve others. In that, I believe I have something of a path to live a life of faith in Christ. Amen.